it's me mushy and you're you and we are here at dark and creepy diamond painting for another de-kitting and post review yay jazz hands Woo. <laughs> dark <laughs> or or a sundown <laughs> said in twitch stream dark and creamy I don't know what to think of that. I don't know what to make of it, but it is what it is. <laughs> no, we are dark and creepy. Let's get that clear. All right. But um, anyway, we are here to de-kit and post-review Christmas Ghostface. Worked on him all month and his friends. And the series is done, you guys. Here he is. All right. We'll start with some basic stats. I had him marked in my Gemflow app as XM6, which indicates to me in my records that it's a Christmas XM, uh, and he was number six in that category in my Gemflow app. Um, I called him Xmas Ghostface, and his serial number is GA125-4, indicating he was part of a series. He was the fourth in the series. We do have Freddy um michael jason and ghostface I had a brain fart there for a minute I, how how do i not remember these things i'm tired that's how uh but yeah we had those four they came in a kit together uh, obviously they dictated that he was number four um in my personal stash he was number 381 um and Okay, so his size is 30 by 40. As you can see here, he's a round drill. There were 20 colors and the symbols were alphanumeric. So one through, I think it was seven maybe. And then A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Um, I'm a liar. It was all alphabet. It's the Grinch I was thinking was alphanumeric. This was all alpha. I uh, got this from Amazon in a four pack of the killers that I mentioned. It was about $15. Um, so this was about $350 um, indivi you know, individual price. I started him on November 18th of this year. And we finished him on December 25th. A Christmas finish. That was one of the things I asked for for Christmas was more diamond painting time. And I did get it. So yay. Um, it took me approximately 19 hours and 15 minutes, uh, including kit up and estimated kit downtime. And in my personal rating system, I rated him a three out of five and, and we'll talk about why. Um, first I'll start with the pros. Uh, again, as with all his friends, I feel like this is such a unique and fun mashup of Christmas and horror. I, I love to see horror that gets mixed in with something you don't expect it to, like Christmas vibes. Um, I really like the color palette. I like these maroons, um, beiges, these, they're, to me, it almost felt like, um, oh, forgive me, but kind of like rotting or, uh, you know, decaying colors you know it's not the bright red and the bright green and the bright blues that you see these are all the muted darker almost like I said more decayed tones of the colors that we've come to know as traditional Christmas colors you know so there's some there's some dark purple there's some gray there's some um, beigey tan browns uh, I, I, I just I really like that it says Christmas in its colors generally, but it, it horrifies them. So I really like that. Um, the color fading in his eyes and his mouth make it look like he's lit with a red light from within and it's glowing out. I really, really like that detail. I think it came out really well considering the size of the painting and the fact that these are rounds. Um, yeah, and that's, I mean, that's kind of it for my big pros. I do really like he has the lights like all his friends do here. I I really, really like his um, 
candy cane stabber here uh, and it comes to a sharp point. I thought that was really cool. As with all his friends, he has a little skull in his wreath. He's got his nutcracker friends with sharp little knives. Um, just really like this, the, the vibe of this one all together. Um, the cons. There are some random pixels and I think with the last one I didn't I didn't get to it and I didn't do it this time either but um, like right here is a random just a random brown it's not mirrored on the other side so it's kind of just like a random pixel there um, trying to think of where I saw some other ones there were some like in his face a large part of his eye socket was this brown uh, beige color I did go in and alter that um, but there's occasional, you know, like right here, there's a, a random pixel that's, I guess, kind of mirrored right here, but flipped, you know, with this purple. Um, I, I don't know. It's, it, this is what you're going to get with diamond paintings of this size. See, there's a random black there that's not reflected over here. Um, the eyes aren't identical, you know, symmetrical, if you will. So... Um, but it is, you know, it is what it is. And from a viewing distance, it all blends together and comes out looking really, really nice. Um, and, and, you know, like I said, the size and being round, you're going to find pixelation. Um, let me see another con, uh, the color choice for the lights. This was a big bugaboo of mine for all of them in this, but particularly this one, because if you look here, the little the little Christmas lights that he has like a string of them around here and the bulbs are all like brown, maroon, and uh, beige, you know, tan, brown, maroon, tan, you know, brown, maroon, tan, brown, maroon, tan. And it can be hard to distinguish that those are Christmas lights. I would have liked to seen those a white color or maybe a, a bright yellow or some, something to indicate that those are actual Christmas lights. From a viewing distance, you can you get a better idea that that's what it is, but working on it and sitting here close to it, there, it's hard to distinguish that those are a string of Christmas lights. And, and the string of lights, you can kind of see it goes here and comes around the side of his hat. It's, it is a little bit hard to, to tell because it is the same maroon that's also woven throughout here. I would have liked to seen, you know, a definitive color like all black for the string or a, a dark green or um, something to, to make it say, hey, I'm a string of lights. Look at me. Um, if I had had the desire and more time, I probably would have glow in the dark um, flip, switched out glow in the dark beads for his his lights but I did make some alterations and I didn't want to overdo it with the glow in the dark so I did just leave them as the kit presented it um, some of the finer details are lost in this uh, kind of like the other ones because of the size again and, and, the, and the drill shape um, from a distance you can tell this is a wreath but you know obviously it's supposed to be some kind of floral situation here you can't really tell the finer details of I think these may be some holly berries here um, you know but the finer details get lost you can tell these are nutcrackers uh, in general but but they're fuzzy nutcrackers it is what it is I'm not unhappy with it I'm just it's an observation um, and as with his other friends, this was a nightmare to see the letters with a light board, even without a light board and a direct light shining down on it. It was still a nightmare. This was another one. I had to pull out the camera, take pictures, zoom in. The letters were predominantly white letters and they were on a lighter color background, um, or a mid-tone background. Some of them were fuzzy, like the S's were fuzzy, the E's were fuzzy, the D's and the O's looked the same. They were both light in color and they both had a similar background color. So that was so hard to distinguish D's from O's, um, R's and P's and K's and E's and all of them kind of just were a little blurry, very hard to see with the light board, 
even a, it just as hard to see with a direct light on top. I did have to bust out the camera and zoom in. Um, and that could explain some of the pixelation. If I popped some of these random pixels off of here to see what was under there, I, it could have been a me mistake, mistaking the letter underneath for a different letter, you know. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, and then, yeah, that, that was really all for the pros and cons, I guess. And my final note would be add-ons. Sometimes I do like to bling my paintings and particularly when it's a series, I like to try to kind of bring something that ties them all together. So in the other ones, um, Michael, Freddie, Jason, I did add some glow in the dark elements. I did to this one as well. And I'll insert pictures here so you can see, but I did glow in the dark ghost face mask and the white stripe of his candy cane dagger. Um, and which is why I didn't also do the lights. I guess I could have, and it arguably wouldn't have been overkill, but I was, I just really didn't want to ruin this painting by making so much glow in the dark. Um, I got the important stuff, his face and his, his dagger. And I thought it turned out looking really nice that way in the future. If I feel like it, would I maybe consider going back and glow and dark glow in the darking the lights? Probably. Um, maybe we'll see. might be something I, I look back and if it bugs me long enough, I'll go back and do it. But for now I'm happy with how he turned out. What do you guys think? Do you like how he turned out? What do you think? I really am impressed with this, um, almost glow from within effect of the eyes and the mouth and the nose. I really like that element. So, all right, that is all for the post review that I have. And that is it for the series too. We are done with the Christmas killer series. So yay. All right. Pick up the phone, Sydney. <laughs> Sorry. Put me away. <laughs> Shut your mouth. You're a fool. Okay. No. <laughs> Sorry. I'm really dumb. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was my daughter She's contributing um, something. Um, this, this is the kit that I used to work out of. Um, as you can see, I do have them labeled here, but oh my gosh, there's like some mysterious stuff over here. Don't you concern yourself with this. These are, these are something else. Never you mind. None of your business. No, uh, this is my coasters. Um, my coaster rhinestone. So we'll just be de-kitting this part and we're going to need our funnel and we're going to need this and we're going to need our storage. Here's the mama jamma. The... Oh boy. Um, so let me start the de-kitting process. All right. <clears throat> so Christmas is over at the time of viewing and filming. So how was your Christmas? K is 150. I had a delightful Christmas. We had, I need an emergency mushy is a klutz tray. Here we go. There, there we go. <laughs> uh, let's see. So now we got buying 150. Um, I did have a really nice Christmas. I hope you guys had a good Christmas holiday situation, whatever you celebrate or don't. Um, I just hope that the season and, and the day and this time of time off was really good for you. Um, it was bittersweet in our house. Um, my grandmother passed away on December 6th. It was something that we foresaw coming and that she desired for herself. Um, I know that sounds morbid, but she was old. She was in her nineties. She had been suffering for a long time and, um, had come to peace with what was happening, you know, and, um, was waiting for it. And she entered hospice. Uh, actually her service was on December 6th. I, I apologize. No disrespect. Day, day uh, no, no respect, disrespect to my grandmother. Um, that was the day of her service. Her, she actually passed the day after Thanksgiving. 
Um, she was put into hospice. Oh, okay. We're going to have to find a new situation for this. My grandmother was put into hospice, um, I believe on Thanksgiving or the day before Thanksgiving. And, um, yeah, we need, I need a new situation for this. Oh, I wish you guys were here right now in this moment to like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do what like I hope is a smart idea. Right. What I imagine a smarter person would do. And I'm going to dump it in the tray. And then, and then I'm going to use the pour spout on the tray. Look at that, you guys. <laughs> I grew a brain. <laughs> Woohoo. Um, anyway, sorry. Um, my, my grandmother went to hospice on Thanksgiving and then, um, passed away the next day and her service was on the 6th of December. So this was the first Christmas that we had without my grandmother. Um, but like I said, we, we've all come to terms and to peace with it. Um, she made it abundantly clear that, uh, she did not want, you know, um, negativity surrounding her passing, that, that it, that it was something she was welcoming. She wanted to, um, she wanted this. She was, she was in so much suffering and they couldn't really help her. So, uh, you know, um, we, we knew it was coming, so it wasn't like a shock or surprise. So that was kind of a blessing and really her passing was a mercy to her. Um, and she, um, had lost her oldest son, my uncle, to cancer um, a few years back. And before that, she lost her true love, um, my grandfather, to a brain tumor um, many years ago when, when my dad and my uncle were teenagers. And my father has cancer. Um, so these were me messing up everywhere. These were things, all things that were weighing on her, especially at the end. And, um, you know, so she, the way we like to view it and the way she viewed it is that she was going to be reunited with her parents. Her sisters had passed before her. Her, one of her sons had passed before her, um, I hope to have my dad around a really, really long time, and his cancer treatment seems to be going very well. He has, um, not pancreas, it's the man one, um, prostate, prostate thank you. We, the, the, the prostate's kind of, kind of like a walnut, I guess, generally speaking, and so we call it his walnut, but it's his prostate, um, and, uh, that's all going very well. Um, there's, yeah, it's, it's slowed down. It's not, you know, going all bananas, crazy, taking him out quick kind of thing. So, uh, he's in good spirits. He's in relatively good health considering. And, um, you know, so, you know, this, it's just it, bittersweet, um, situation but it was awkward you know having a Christmas without someone that's been at Christmas long before I was born and uh, you know I got to hear t stories about how she grew up in in a day and age when cars had to be cranked you know like the front of the car had to be cranked and uh, she was a farm girl and um, they had uh, outhouses. She used to tell me about having to go to the outhouse in the middle of winter to go to the bathroom if you had to go to the bathroom at night. And like, no power, no running water. Um, it's just interesting to hear how 
life was before all this technology and the convenience that we take for granted. Um, and she was a tough, wise woman. Anyway, uh, I digress. Um, it was, like I said, um, you know, something that, oh, something that we saw coming and something that she uh, was hoping for and uh, as, as, as awful as that sounds to some people, um, it is what it is. So, um, you know, we, we did make sure to, to spend some extra phone time with my dad and make sure he was okay. Um, but the, the sweet part of Christmas, whereas that could be the bitter part, the sweeter part of Christmas was that sundown. For those of you who don't follow us on Twitch, um, or haven't seen one of the other videos where sundown was allowed near my camera <laughs> and left a little, uh, f to him funny, haha. -ha. Okay. You guys, 435. The next number on here is 4 freaking 35, unless I wrote it wrong. And I don't have a 435. I have a 4. Okay, it must have been 436 and I wrote it wrong because this is empty and this is the right color. If you can hear that, that's my stomach. I'm hungry, apparently. Um, but Sundown um, grew up... What am I doing with my life? Grew up um, not knowing his biological father. Uh, he only had, he's 49 now. Um, he only had the name of his father, which was a very generic name. Um, so Google was of no help. It wasn't like, you know, a name where you, John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt, you know, where, hey, that's pretty unique. We could probably find that name or, you know. Googleheimer, Johannesburgenstein, you know, something that, interesting. No, this was just a, a very generic name. So he um, never had any luck finding his family. Um, and like he said, like I said, he only had the name of his father and the year he was born, like himself. And um, the, the town he was born in and the town that like his mother and father created him. So, uh, he's gone his whole life wondering like, where did I come from? You know, where, what is my background on that side? Are they good people? Are they bad people? Do I you know, have aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, you know, who am I? Who, who is that half of me? Um, and so about six months or so back, we got him, we being Al Van AC, our daughter, Al, and, uh, I got him 23 and me. My daughter, uh, got 23 and me when it I think nearly when it first came out, just she's big into genealogy and, um, she did not know. Oh, my, my cords in the way. Sorry. I don't know how long that was there. I apologize. Um, she grew up without having sundown in her life. Um, no blame, no shame. It, it was, we were young and we were too young for that that journey together at that time um, but we are together now so that's all that matters but um growing up not knowing more than what i could tell her about her father and having met him only the one time when she was young and memories don't stick very well um she was curious about like, hey, where did I come from? Maybe I can find out, you know. She knew she had siblings and uh, all that stuff. So she, she got nosy, you know, in that regard. And S779 uh, did 23 and Me, And then found some of the, some of the people from 
her, uh, sundown side of the family popped up on her, you know, genealogy, as you would expect. And um, then she had me do the 23 and me because she was, you know, loving finding out like family trees and all this stuff. And then she had my dad do the 23 and me. Um, and then when we moved here in April, we got Sundown a 23 and me kit. And he was seeing all these names pop up in 838. Oh, we need the next tier, folks. Let's put the lid back on here. So Sundown um, did the 23 and me and got the results back and started seeing names that were coming from his biological father's side of the family. And so he reached out to a couple of them via the messaging system and didn't get a response. And he kind of, you know, he, he was kind of saddened by that, um, disappointed, hurt a little bit. And, and, you know, but he, he understood, he was like, you know, maybe 838, where were we? And maybe, you know, they don't know about me or maybe they don't want anything, you know, maybe it was a bad situation or something. So like, I'll just leave it alone. Um, well, here comes six months later, fast forward to Christmas, the day before uh, Christmas Eve Eve, maybe, or Christmas Eve, he was just feeling, you know, the holiday spirit and nostalgic and, um, a, a notification had come up on 23andMe like, hey, we found more people you're related to. Come check it out. And so he was like, you know, I really, I really, what I want for Christmas is I, I would love to know more just about where I come from. I, I just want information. I don't have to be part of the family if they don't want me. I just, information, you know, I'm not getting any younger. I know too. Um... And so I was like, hey, you know, why don't you reach out? Go ahead and reach out again. What's the worst that could happen? The worst that could happen is they could tell you to F off or they could, um, you know, just ignore your message. You know, or they could, wait for it, they could talk back to you. You know, they could reach out to you in the spirit of the holidays and, you know, your your desire just to not be interfering, but to know, know more about yourself. They, they could, it could be good. So he, okay, you know, um, but he was really nervous and, and stuff about it. So I helped him write a message and to his first cousin who he shares 14% DNA with and said, you know, Hey, I, I'm not trying to bother you. You know, I know I did message you six months ago. Oh, six months ago. I'm not trying to bother you, but I, you know, it is Christmas. I have kids. I, I am not getting any younger. I have some health issues and I just, all I really want is just to know where I came from, please. You know, if you wouldn't mind sharing any kind of information that, that, can give me some answers about who I, who I am and where I come from, who I come from. I would really appreciate that. And um, he fully did not expect to hear anything back. So then we sent that message off and he left to go get our Christmas dinner pizzas. Um, and while he was out, lo and behold, our 934. Um, nine, thirty-four. Lo and behold, he got a response and, um, he messaged me on his way home and he's like, I just heard back. I just heard back. Oh my gosh. And kind of like in a little excited, I need to find somewhere to put these right here on my paper, excited panic, you know, like he was excited you guys. Um, and, but nervous, like, what does it say? What, whatever. And, um, he said, I just heard back. I stopped, I pulled over to read the message. Um, and my cousin, that my first cousin responded. She didn't see my first message all those months ago. She saw this one though. 
and responded within like an hour or two. She says, I have a brother. Um, I think I, it's safe to say his name because uh, it's a very common first name, non-identifiable. Uh, I have a brother, his name is Troy, and he wants to talk to me and I got his phone number. J950. So, um, for Christmas, Sundown, and by extension, our daughter got family. <laughs> I mean, what better gift could you ask for, you know, or want for Christmas than family? He found out, Sundown found out he has a, a half-brother um, who knew about him but didn't, you know, um, they're... The, the sadly, um, Sundown's father passed away several years ago, and um, so Sundown was not able to meet or talk to his father. But um, he he does have aunts, uncles, cousins, siblings, and um, the only the only person that really knew about him. Which I suspect is maybe part of why it they were hesitant to respond because um, nobody really knew that Sundown was out there in the world. Um, but but the one person who did know was his brother. Um, their father had shared that information with him before he passed. Thirty three twenty eight. Um. In a, in a moment of, you know, bonding and, and such. 3328, you. So, so yeah, Sundown's brother was aware that Sundown was out there, but didn't know how to reach him. Um, and he, he wasn't, he never did the 23 in me. I never saw a reason to, you know, I didn't, you know, didn't even occur to him to do it. So, um, you know, he didn't see that connection, you know, when, when Sundown did it and stuff. So, um, yeah, Sundown got to call and FaceTime with his brother um, and find out that he had siblings and aunts and spent the whole holiday and, you know, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, getting all kinds of messages of love and support and acceptance from his I would say, I guess, new family. Can you, I mean, they've always been his family, but they're new in his life. So I'm going to, I'm going to say new family. I hope no one takes offense to that, but, um, yeah, that was the best gift that he could get. And then, you know, by extension, our daughter now knows more, more, more about where she is from and her background and, and stuff about her you know so it was a win-win for everybody um it was really and and on top of all that speaking of family this was our first christmas together as a family um sundown and i had spent a christmas um together when we were younger um so that would have been our first christmas but 37 40 but this was our first Christmas together as in an, uh, a family unit. Um, we were not able to have, 3740 is E. We were not able to have uh, our daughter's siblings um, with us this year, but they were with us in thoughts and spirit. You know, we, um, they have their, their own lives and are spread out a little bit. So it's not like we're all clustered together in one central location there. Um, our daughter has an older sister and three younger brothers. Um, and, uh, they all kind of 37 99 are all grown and, and they're out there, you know, in the world doing their adult children things. So, um, 
but we definitely thought about them and uh, wished them Merry Christmases and um, wish they could have been here with us, but there's always next year, right? There's always next year, we hope. So, um, yeah, it was, all in all, it was a good Christmas, and I hope you guys had a good Christmas as well. Lots of, ours was more of the Hallmark type of Christmas, you know, with the family and the, um, the loss of loved ones and the, the gaining of loved ones and, uh, that whole kind of thing. But, um, Christmas isn't 30, 801H. Christmas isn't the, it's not about the gifts, folks, you know, um, not the material gifts. It's about the, it's about the heart and the, the family, the, whether you're religious or not, the holiday, you know, itself can be whatever you want to make it, obviously. But uh, for us, the general premise is of, of the holiday is um, days of rest, days of thankfulness, days of family, of love, of togetherness, of um, getting to take that pause in life. Then life hits a pause button for that day or two. And you can take a minute and breathe and 3823 and enjoy the people in your life and um, share, you know, some time remembering the people that aren't in your life or, or have left your life, you know, it's, it's the emotion part, but there is the gifts too, y'all. Yes, we did. We did partake in some gifts. Um, and so there on Christmas, there was also the obligatory parental assembly of furniture and toy, not toys, but my daughter's grown. So that, like she didn't get toys, but adult, no, I don't want to say adult toys. I don't, <laughs> I don't mean like adult toys like that. I realize how that's going to sound. Let me, how do I say that? 3861. Let's just pick a number instead. <laughs> Let's forget what I said. Um, 3861 is V. Uh, what I mean by adult toys is <laughs> it's like my daughter got a van, a makeup vanity. We got her a makeup vanity that is a wall hanging one. Um, big mirror and, and multicolored mirror and stuff in it. Uh, some shelf. Oh, what am I doing? Shelves and stuff. So by, by adult <laughs> toy, I just meant it wasn't like, um, we have to put together a, a Barbie bike or a little Barbie car or, um, a dream house or, you know, and it put batteries in a bunch of noise making BS. What I meant was <laughs> furniture had to be assembled. They were, you know, adult gifts. No, <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't make it not okay. <laughs> 38, 38, 63. Didn't I just do that one? Am I, no, am I crazy? I, <laughs> I got away from myself there. 38, 63 was F. Okay. Um, you know, and then my adult toy <laughs> was, I got a tripod, which obviously I'm not using yet, uh, but hope too soon and, um, for filming and I got sound, um, s not soundproof curtains cause hi, they're curtains, but it is sound deadening curtains to help, um, try to keep the, the sharpness of the background noise and the bark machines and the grump monster, the Grinch in there quiet, uh, during filming and L 3864, 3864. Um, spoiler, I did get myself some diamond paintings because I fully intend on going on a no buy. Well, not a no buy, a low buy for this new year. Um, but there is a new diamond painting company. I mentioned it in the whip and chat. 
Um, and I am going to, I placed an order and what did I just do? You guys, I, uh, I, I de Oh my God. Okay. Um, let's try this again, but the right way I did order from this company. I'm going to do an unboxing with you guys. Um, I am very excited. It is an all horror themed diamond painting company. They, uh, sell only horror themed diamond paintings. Yes. Yes. I'm very excited. Very, very. So I did uh, order those. Sundown got a drone um, to fly around our little farm. And a, we got a um, smart thermostat. So that was pretty cool. I think... I want to know what you guys got. Please tell me you got some. The only thing I didn't really get was some diamond painting accessories. And, uh, I mean, I have a serious addiction to that. So, um, <laughs> it's a surprise. I did not. But I, I'm dying to hear. What did you guys get? Specifically diamond painting related. But also other. Like, did you get something, anything like really cool that um, inquiring minds need to know? Because I want to know. I'm nosy. I, I want to know. Did any of you have a Hallmark esque Christmas? You know that was that was more about, uh, you know, something that could have been a movie could have been made out of it. That would have been you know cool. Um, did any of you turn into Santa? <laughs> we watched that Tim Allen Santa Claus movie and TV show. There's like a series now of the Tim Allen Santa Claus, and we watched that. Um, so that's why I asked because it's fresh in my brain. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, that is it for our D kit of Mr. Ghostface. He is all D kitted. Everything's put away. And we have talked about him and had a little chat to boot. So um, the rest is up to me. I'm not going to make you stick around for the cleanup. That's my job. And with that, I... Hope you had a very happy holiday. If you like this kind of content, let me know with a thumbs up so I know if I should still keep making like kit ups, kit downs, um, post reviews and stuff. I need to know if you like this stuff. I'm not psychic. Um, God, wouldn't that be cool though? But I'm not. So um, yeah, let me know if you are new here. Hi, I hope you enjoyed uh, the kit down and post review. And if you're a returning uh, subscriber, hi, I, I missed you. I'm glad you came back. I hope to see you in the next one. And with that, I bid you a naughty night. Bye.